How are we doing, guys? We're looking at velocity time graphs here. Uh, if you're looking at fundamental applied maths, it's page 25, exercise 2B. We're looking at questions 2 and 4. Um, a velocity time graph looks like this. You get velocity on your y-axis and time on your x-axis. Uh, so this one shows an object that starts moving at 2 meters per second and over the course of 3 seconds accelerates upwards to 8 meters per second. Um, now, a few things about a velocity time graph. First of all, uh, if you wanted to say, well, what the acceleration, you might come down here and you'd say, well, I know the final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time, v is u plus at, I know that already. Um, so if I solve this equation, I can find it. Okay, well, eight equals two plus three a, bring the two over, you get six equals three a, the acceleration there is two meters per second squared okay that's using a bit of algebra however if you came up to your graph and said well look at the slope of my graph that's a rise of six meters per second and a run of three seconds so actually the slope of my graph rise over run six meters per second over three seconds <clears throat> is two meters per second squared as well so one of the nice things about a velocity time graph is you can find acceleration from the slope you can just pick it off the graph quite quickly uh, without necessarily having to go and do the calculations okay both methods work but it can be useful to be able to lift it quite quickly with the slope and um, another thing that you might ask is how far has this thing traveled and um, so i'm going to do this <clears throat> over here i'm going to say well distance is ut plus a half a t squared Okay, we know that. Now I'll just point out that this six meters per second is the acceleration multiplied by the time. That's a t. Okay, and um, you can see that because eight is the final velocity is the initial velocity two plus a t. V equals u plus a t. So actually you can see there is two plus a t you can see visually on the graph. Um, if I was to find that distance, well, u is two, time is three, plus a half of the acceleration is two, and the time is three squared. Okay, so that's six to half of two is one plus nine. 13 meters is the distance traveled. However, if I come back to my graph, two multiplied by three is this area here. So that bit there, ut is that box down the bottom. And this area here, area of the triangle, is half the base times the perpendicular height. That's half of three multiplied by whatever that at is here. Okay, for us, that's two multiplied by three is six. So it's a half of three times six, um, and a half of three times six is nine. So what we find is that the area under the graph is equal to the total displacement. And the slope of a graph, hopefully you'll remember, is the acceleration. And we're going to use both of those tricks to work on questions 2 and 4 on 25B. That's page 25, sorry, exercise 2B. Uh, so this question here, question 2, uh, a car accelerates from rest to a speed 20 meters per second over a five second time interval, then continues at this constant speed. Before you do any calculations, draw a... Uh, velocity time graph. Okay, so you draw your axes and you say, well, it's going to accelerate to a speed of 20. So I'll mark that on one axis over a five second. Let's do one, two, three, four, five second interval um, from rest. Okay, so what does the graph looks like? Well, it starts from rest, it reaches 20. So th those are the two points on my graph. And um, it then Calculate the acceleration. Now you could use UVAST, you could use some algebra, but what I'm going to do is rise over run. I'm going to say the slope is a rise of 20 meters per second over a run of five seconds, and that gets me four meters per second squared. Okay, so acceleration, 20 over four over five, is four meters per second squared from the slope. Calculate the distance covered during the acceleration. Again, 
I could use U vast, but I'm going to use the area under the curve. So that's just a triangle this time. Area of the triangle is a half of the base, which is five seconds, times the perpendicular height, which is 20 meters per second. Now, if you look what happens to the units here, you have seconds above and below the lines, they actually disappear. Uh, half of five is two and a half times 20 is uh, 50, and you're just left with meters as your unit. Okay, so you can see even the area has units of meters on this graph. Uh, so that's your distance. The third part, the total time taken given the total distance covered was uh, one quarter of a kilometer. Okay, so once it gets to 20, things stops accelerating and it travels on at a constant speed. Okay, now the distance, the total distance is 250 meters. You've already covered 50 meters during the acceleration phase. So now the question is during this next phase when you're traveling at a constant speed of 20 meters per second, you need to travel 200 meters. So you'll use dad city triangle or whatever you might've used before to say, well, time is distance divided by speed. Okay, and that is distance is 200 divided by a speed of 20 gives 10 seconds. And uh, the question was the total time taken, so it's 10 seconds plus the initial five seconds. So it's 15 seconds. And sorry, I really should have drawn that graph carrying on uh, a lot further. Um, just to point out, another way you could have done this is you could have said, well, what shape do I have? And let me... Um, Sorry about this, if I was to redraw that, okay, there's my five, there's my 20, okay, there's my 50 meters in the first five seconds, and my 200 meters here. I could have also said, well, that's a rectangle. So it's 20 multiplied by what? 10 is what gets me that 200 meters. So I could have taken that 10 seconds off the graph as well, had I drawn it correctly. Question five, we'll look at now. So here's question five, car accelerates at two meters per second squared from rest, speed of 40 meters per second, then travels at steady speed. Maybe pause the video and try and draw yourself a velocity time graph for this. I'll stick it up now in a second. Okay, so here is our velocity time graph. We know we're gonna reach a speed of uh, 40 meters per second, they tell us. Okay, so it accelerates until it reaches 40 meters per second, then travels at a steady speed, speed doesn't change. Um, and finally decelerates to rest at five meters per second squared. Okay, now what I haven't included here is those two accelerations. Well, my slope here I know is two meters per second squared as it's accelerating, and my slope here is five meters per second squared, or minus if you like, because it's going down the page, uh, as it's decelerating. And um, find the distance covered during acceleration. Okay, now to get that distance, you're gonna to need to know this time here, Okay, so you'll say something like, well, I know that two meters per second is my slope. That's rise, um, two meters per second squared. Rise over run, where that's time, I'll call it T1. Okay, and you might be able to do this in your head, or you might say, well, then 2T equals 40, and T equals 20 seconds. Okay, so that's 20 seconds there, accelerating. And while we're at it, let's do the same thing for decelerating. Um, slope five meters per second squared equals a uh, rise of 40 over a run of t2 we'll call it that's t2 sorry i should have said t1 really is that time interval um, and again 5t equals 40 and t is 40 over 5 eight seconds okay so Generally speaking, when you draw yourself a velocity time graph, you'll work all this stuff out nearly before you go and look at what question they're asking. So the distance covered during acceleration, S1, this distance here, okay, that's going to be a half of the base, which is 20 seconds. That's the time times the perpendicular height is 40. Okay, so that's for a triangle, and that's going to be 400 meters. Uh, the distance covered during deceleration, that's this distance here, area under the curve. S2 is a half of the base, which is eight, 
times the perpendicular height is 40, and that's going to be 160 meters. And the question then says, if the entire journey from rest was one kilometer long, find the total time taken. Okay, so there's 560 meters between these two, which means you've got 440 meters in here. Okay, that's how far you've traveled during this constant speed section of the journey is 440 meters. Okay, well, that's a rectangle. Height is 40, so width needs to be uh, 440 divided by 40 is 11 seconds. Okay, which means our total time is this 20 seconds of accelerating plus this 11 seconds of constant motion uh, plus the final eight seconds of decelerating. And that is 39 seconds. Okay, I'm going to ask you now to do questions one and questions three on page 25, please. Thank you very much.